One is Sony's new baby in a desperate move to reinvent themselves, and the other is the here to Samsung self-created phablet category. After spending a couple of weeks with one and almost three months with the other, it's time to compare them. I'm Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Sony Xperia ZL versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. The idea of comparing Sony's latest Xperia ZL against the full-fledged phablet is kind of complicated since these are two similar devices that were built with different customers in mind. On one hand, Sony has built the Xperia ZL in a way that ignores the need of a bezel, in order to give you a 5-inch display on regular human dimensions, so this is more of a phone that anybody could consider. On the other hand, we have the Galaxy Note 2 where Samsung is not trying to be small, nor fit in one hand. On the contrary, this is more of a proof-of-concept product where Samsung wants to show the world that bigger is better, and so far, they have reacted positively to it. When comparing design and build quality, the Xperia ZL probably won the race in giving you a pocketable 5-inch display, but that's it. It's not thinner than the Note 2, and just obviously shorter, slimmer, and lighter when it comes to design. Both devices are made out of plastic, but the Note 2 takes a more bombastic approach with its shiny hyperglaze coating, where the Xperia ZL keeps a more conventional design and textured back that reminds us more of the Galaxy Note 1. Since neither of these devices is out to model for Cosmo, none of them feel cheap in the hand due to their heft. The Xperia does seem like if it could take more of a beating than the Note 2, but sadly, this comparison did not include a torture test, and don't ask for it. Overall, their differences are clear in hardware, but it's hard to tell you if one is better than the other since beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. When it comes to specs, off the bat there is a huge difference in their displays. The Xperia ZL rocks a 5-inch 1080p LCD giving you a staggering 441 pixels per inch compared to the 5.5-inch 720p AMOLED panel on the Note 2, which gives you 267 pixels per inch. Now, does the edge go to the Xperia ZL just because of the added specs? Well, not really. There's almost no bezel here, which is great, but viewing angles are terrible compared to the Note 2. And the Note 2's display includes support for Samsung's S Pen, which brings you additional pen input, hovering functionality, and additional other features that are pretty much unique to the Galaxy Note 2. Both devices have 2GB of RAM, and they start at 16GB of storage. They have expandable storage, and the usual suck specs the flagship device would have, except for the fact that the ZL does include an IR blaster that's pretty much the thing in 2013, and obviously the Note 2 doesn't. They also rock a quad-core processor being the Snapdragon S4 Pro clocked at 1.5GHz on the ZL, and the Note 2 is running their acclaimed Exynos at 1.6GHz. And even though the Note 2 is 6 months older than the ZL, Sony's choice of last year's Snapdragon doesn't give you the edge when it comes to up-to-date processor specifications. As per benchmarks, Quadrant does show that the Xperia ZL is quite superior than the Note 2, but honestly, once you compare these on day-to-day -day use, even with intensive applications, you really don't notice the difference on either of these devices. Overall, even though these devices are clearly different, their differences are quite insignificant when it comes to specs. And even though we do get the 1080p display on the Xperia ZL, the Note 2 does give you crisp detail even six months after being on the market. And obviously, with the S Pen functionality, it does make you wonder if one gives you more added value than the other. Now, software is where things differ dramatically, since Sony has enhanced their UI in a way to embrace the Android feel. And they're trying to look a lot like Android, and in the case of Samsung, they're clearly just using Android to power TouchWiz, but they're giving you their Samsung experience regardless of what Android is. They want to give you something completely different. The problem with the Xperia ZL is that even though it tries to be unique in their Sony way, well, it looks a lot like Android, but it doesn't do a great job at either being unique or looking like Android. The user experience is elegant, it's refined and it's snappy, but it only makes Android look better and not really work better, as moving widgets around, for example, is kind of frustrating and the keyboard is definitely terrible, things that shouldn't have been fixed. The Note 2, by contrast, isn't trying to be Android. Samsung's Nature UX is a complete departure from that. It's actually its own UI with hardware buttons, and since it's enhanced for note-taking input, it's definitely focused on giving you a dramatically different feel. Samsung also goes as far as to include smart actions to try to enhance your experience with the device, or give you different things that are either better or just will convolute your experience, but with the clear purpose of adding value to what you're buying, which is a Galaxy phone, and they obviously want to make the Galaxy phone something different. The great thing is that this is still Android, so if you choose to keep these launchers or change them, you can do so whenever you want. And overall, even though these devices do keep separate approaches, Samsung does give you the edge in giving you a 
bold customization and sometimes adding value to your experience, whereas Sony is a little more conventional and sometimes not really giving you the difference that you want. Now, obviously, Sony does provide some enhancements in their multitasking features with their hovering widgets, which are small applications, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it has a better edge over the Galaxy Note 2. Now, when it comes to day-to-day -day use, I will tell you that the Xperia ZL does beat the pants off the Note 2 when it comes to call quality, or pretty much any other phone that I've tested. Honestly, the Xperia ZL sounds amazing, and you really don't have to enhance anything like you have to do on the Note 2 if you want better call quality. Photographs on both of these devices are honestly good, but you really can't tell the difference. Even if the Xperia ZL is rocking a 13.1 megapixel camera in comparison to the 8 megapixel camera on the Note 2. The Note 2 does provide good photographs, probably second best in comparison to the iPhone. And the Xperia ZL is, well, just as good, but you don't really feel something better on the ZL in any way. And the same goes for 1080p performance as both devices are great, but I really don't consider HDR video to be superior. It is better, but it doesn't bring you a dramatic departure between one video recording and the other. Now, battery life is the obvious spot where the Note 2 wins since it has a much bigger cell to power less pixels on the display, and it's definitely the king of battery life overall. But still, on the Xperia ZL and the one that we've tested, which is HSPA+, honestly, well, the device is good. It'll give you more than a day of battery life, so either of these devices give you above average battery life, but obviously the Note 2 will win. And speaking of HSPA+, our tests on these networks were good so far. Either of these devices will give you pretty much the same experience. Fast data speeds, fast Wi-Fi switches, all is great. Bottom line, if you're trying to find the winner between either of these, it's hard since both these devices are designed to serve different customers, and both perform almost the same in real-world tests. I guess the biggest question I'd have for you is if you'd prefer a phone that's clearly trying to be big, which would be the Galaxy Note 2, or if you want a phone that is big but is trying to be small, which would be the Xperia ZL. Once you answer that question, regardless of which device you pick, you'll be rocking the latest and greatest of Android, and honestly, both these devices are head-turners, so you'll be well served regardless of which device you pick. That's it for today's comparison between the Sony Xperia ZL and the Galaxy Note 2. We hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments down below and your impressions as to which device would you believe is better, even if you could consider any of these to be better if both are actually cool. But again, follow us in your social network of choice. Leave this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching.